Welcome back to my Oklahoma Sooners Death Penalty Dynasty, and today we'll be doing the next offseason and getting ready for Season 7 of the series. I would say this season went pretty well for us. We finished the year 16-0, the number one team in the country, winning the national championship. Here is our path to the championship if you did not see any of the playoff games. We beat North Carolina 38-33, then we took down Florida 45-35, and then we pretty much dominated the national championship winning 45 to 14. And I am very excited for this offseason because I can finally add five star players and we have no more restrictions whatsoever. The restrictions that I've been using are down in the description if you don't know what those are. But this is the first year where I have none. Obviously, I will get more into recruiting and things like that later in the video. But for now, let's go ahead and advance week and end the bowl season. And we did get to rewrite the record books a little bit this season, starting with the best QB rating college football has ever seen from Ty Downing, who finished with a 214.9. And next, we have the record for the most passing yards in a single season by any Oklahoma Sooner. I think Bradford did it in 14 games, though. It took Ty Downing 16 games, but he still owns the record now. And Ty Downing also broke the record for passing touchdowns in a career as a Sooner, passing Landry Jones. And Downing still has one year left of eligibility, so he could come back and add to that record. And Youth Lane Washington set the record for most receiving yards in a single season by any Sooner, passing Ryan Broyles. I didn't even know this one, I guess I missed that one, but Youth Lane Washington also set the school record for receiving touchdowns in a season with 18 beating D.D. Westbrook's record. And like I said, we had a few records broken this year, and this one is to Chris McKinney, the true freshman running back who broke Adrian Peterson's record of 1,925 yards by running for 2,145 yards. Granted, he had a few more games than Adrian Peterson to do it, but still over 2,000 yards. And this is the oldest record I think we have broken. Billy Sims' rushing touchdown record of 23 has been broken by Chris McKinney, who ran for 30 this season. And true freshman defensive end Dwight Rollins set the school record for sacks in a season with 17, beating Martin Chase's record of 14. And we're finally through all of the new records here. That was a few more records than I honestly thought we had broken. And I can't remember if I've done this the last few off seasons or not, so let's scroll through some of these bowl games. Starting with Georgia defeats Wisconsin 42-20 in the Gasparilla Bowl. Anything else major? What about our conference? TCU lost to Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech was the number seven team in the country, though, in the Cheez-It Bowl. That's a little bit ridiculous, I think. Uh, Purdue lost to California, not our conference, but Baylor is in our conference and lost to Arizona State. So, so far, the Big 12 is 0-2, outside of us, obviously. Uh, Iowa lost to Kentucky. Tennessee lost to Kansas State. Kansas State gets our first win, obviously. We beat Florida, so that's now 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Cincinnati is in our conference. We played them in the conference championship game, and they got absolutely blown out by Wake Forest, 42-17. Alabama lost to Ohio State, 28-9. Let's see, Auburn beat Texas, so now we're, what, 2-3 and three in bowl games here? Uh, now we're 3-3. Three and three. I guess we get to count each one of ours, or at least I'm going to. Arkansas won. Notre we knew that one. That was part of the playoffs. Notre Dame also defeated Stanford in the playoffs. Uh, Florida State defeated Michigan. Florida defeated USC. I don't think that game was that score. That was a much bigger blowout whenever um, I had the playoff graphic. It was like 35 to 6 or something like that. They blew them out whenever I first simulated that game. We obviously defeat Notre Dame. Okay, so uh, I think if I did that math correctly, we should be 4 and 3 in bowl games. That's uh, not great, honestly. If you've somehow missed me saying it in the last few videos, Chris McKinney won the Heisman as a true freshman running back for us. Ty Downing, who won the Heisman last year, finishes third this year. And now it's time to go through all of the awards for this season. Ty Downing wins the Maxwell Award. Chris McKinney wins the Walter Camp with Downing and Washington finishing third and fourth there. The McNerick Award, if I said that right, goes to Wika Moore. Nagurski Award goes to Dwight Rollins. O'Brien Award goes to Ty Downing. Walker Award goes to Chris McKinney. So far, we are sweeping this. Belitnikov goes to Udlane Washington. The Mackey Award, yeah, we don't have anyone there. Okay, so the best tight end in the country goes to Georgia. The Outland Award, which I believe is the best lineman, goes to Durbin at Notre Dame. The Remington goes to Auburn. The Lombardi goes to Dwight Rollins here. The Buckus Award goes to a linebacker that plays for Auburn. The Thorpe Award, Kawiga Moore finishes second, George Steele finishes fourth, and it goes to Pitt there. The Groza Award goes to Notre Dame, the Guy Award goes to Notre Dame as well, and the Jet Award goes to Jeff Benson. And I'm just now realizing, I think I did this out of order. Usually I do all the stats first and then the awards, but whatever, we'll go look at the stats next. 
Now we're going to take a look at the All-Americans, starting with Ty Downing, Chris McKinney, and Udley in Washington, all being first-team All-Americans. Anyone else on our team? Dwight Rollins made first-team defensive end. Ronnie Simpson made first-team defensive tackle. David Jordan made first-team middle linebacker. And George Steele made first-team corner. Anyone else? Kawika Moore made first-team safety. And Jeff Benson is the returner. Did anyone for us make second team? Or were we first team or bust here? And it looks like Mike Handy is a second team defensive tackle. And Jason Trimble is a second team strong safety. And now we will take a look at the all conference team, starting with Ty Downing, Chris McKinney, Hugh Lane Washington, Josh Higgins, and Josh McDougal. Two of our linemen actually made this one. Dwight Rollins, Ashton Mills, Ronnie Simpson, and Mike Handy. Our entire D line made it. David Jordan made it as middle linebacker. Uh, right outside linebacker goes to Texas, so we don't get our entire front seven, but we do get Jake Wright at right outside linebacker. Corner goes to George Steele and anyone else. Brian Alexander, a true freshman, made all-conference. Kawika Moore in his last season here made all-conference. Jermaine Allen made all-conference kicker. And then kick returner obviously goes to Jeff Benson. What about all-conference second team? We get Marlon Ellis, our left tackle here. We get our right tackle, AJ Peterson. We get our defensive tackle, Ryan Covington. So not only did our entire defensive line make all-conference first team, Ryan Covington is a backup and made all-conference second team. So our defense played really well most of the year. Alex Red makes second team all-conference. Jason Trimble makes second team all-conference. And that is it for us. But now we can finally jump into the stats for the season. Ty Downing finishes with 4,983 passing yards. You guys saw that earlier. And 48 touchdowns. He did go up a little bit in interceptions, but we played a couple more games, but I was still kind of careless with the ball a lot this year. But still, 48 touchdowns, almost 5,000 yards. He did really well. Running the ball, he didn't have to do quite as much as he had to those first couple years, but still runs for almost 900 yards and 14 touchdowns. And then here's the absolutely insane stat line. Chris McKinney, 342 carries for 2,144 yards getting 6.2 yards a carry and 30 touchdowns. Absolutely insane. Ty Downing, you already saw he had 14. Sean Griffin ran it for two, the backup quarterback. BJ Smith in his final year here. He got injured in week one, didn't really come back, I think until the conference championship game. So he does not get much stats on the year. And in you, Lynn Washington's first year at Oklahoma, he was a Juco transfer this year. He catches 74 passes for 1,800 yards and 18 touchdowns. He was absolutely deadly this year. Wayne Outlaw, 45 for 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Jeff Benson, 35 catches. Kind of low, but 841 yards and 5 touchdowns. Chris McKinney also caught 6 touchdowns. Let's compare some of the older stats. So Wayne Outlaw actually gets a career low in receiving touchdowns with 10, but still a pretty solid year. He could possibly leave after this year, though. And Jeff Benson not getting his career low in touchdowns. Last season, he somehow only got 3 touchdowns. But he only got 841 yards this year, which is a career low, and he could also end up leaving this season. And leading the team in tackles this year is senior safety Kawika Moore with 117, who led the team in tackles for a loss. I would imagine it's going to be Dwight Rollins, and that's exactly who it is with 28 of them. In sacks, Dwight Rollins got 17. Mike Handy got 11 this year. He actually played really well. Ronnie Simpson ended with 8. Ashton Mills got 6. What about interceptions? George Steele ended up with eight picks on the year. Alex Red got two. And then the following players got one interception. Kawika Moore, Eric Kemp, Jason Tremblay, Eugene Blake, and Brian Alexander. So I probably don't kick enough field goals in this series. We only attempted 13 this year and 12 last year. But we only missed one field goal this year. And I think it was a kick that I had Jermaine Allen out there for like a 56 to a 58 yarder. It was ridiculously long and he did not make it. And for the second year in a row, we win the Jet Award with our kick returner. I don't even remember who was my kick returner last season, but I know he ended up winning it. And Jeff Benson returns two touchdowns this year. And punt returns, we had a pretty solid punt returner with Josh Golden, but never were able to break one back for a touchdown. In the national championship, I was almost able to do it. And now we can take a look at the national stats. Obviously, starting with QB rating, Ty Downing wins that since he broke the record for it. Who completed the most passes? That is going to be Dale Shelton for Baylor, followed by John Dukes for Notre Dame. Who attempted the most passes? That is going to be John Dukes for Notre Dame with 437. What about yards? That goes to Ty Downing with 4,983. That is a 1,500 yard difference between first and second place. And touchdowns goes to Ty Downing with an 11 touchdown difference between him and John Dukes. What about interceptions? Ty Downing is up here, but that is, is a three-way tie, if I can talk here, with Kyle Utley for Duke, Bob Butler for Miami, and USC's Mike Bailey. 
the most accurate quarterback in the country was apparently Ben Payne for Florida, followed by Dale Sheldon at Baylor and then Ty Downing. And true freshman running back Chris McKinney leads the nation in carries with 342. I believe he also led the nation in yards, yes, with 2,144. And obviously he led it in touchdowns with 30. But Art Coleman for Army, I believe, he was second in Heisman voting with 2,000 yards and 24 touchdowns. I believe I've gone over this before. I believe part of the simulation is broken in this game because it says rushes of more than 20 yards. It says Alvarez, who had 340 carries on the year, only ran for a 20 yard run five times. Chris McKinney did it eight times. Ty Downing did it 22 times. And then here's a stat that I don't want to be leading. Ty Downing fumbled the ball the most out of anybody in college football this year. And leading the country in receptions is going to be Nick Anderson for Baylor, but yards should be Ublane Washington with 1,830. That is a 500 yard difference between first and second place. What about touchdowns? That also goes to Ublane Washington with 18. Second place is Nick Anderson with 15. And do we have anything else? Who led the country in drops? I'm curious of that. That would be Kerry White for West Virginia, but two of our players are up here, Ublane Washington and Jeff Benson. And leading the country in tackles this year is right outside linebacker Marcus Davis, who I believe is from New Mexico State. I believe they are the Lobos, if I remember that correctly. But either way, Kawika Moore finishes third with 117. Uh, solo tackles, once again, part of the simulation that's a little broken. Doesn't look like, like, see, here's Davis here. He only had 58 solo tackles. I don't know why the numbers are so off here. But tackles for loss goes to Jonathan Ruffin for Pitt and in sacks. Dwight Rollins leads the country with 17 and Mike Handy is third with 11. And for the first time in this series, we actually have someone that's pretty high up here on this list for most interceptions on the season. George Steele ended with eight, as did several other people, but leading the nation in it is Mike Williams, a safety from California. And this is probably the reason that Jeff Benson won the Jet Award. He finishes the year averaging 35.3 yards a return. But now all of that is out of the way and we can officially jump into the offseason. And it looks like winning a national championship will earn you a seven year contract extension. Here is how every season has gone. We started this series in 2014 where we went 0-12 and, and then 2015 we went 2-10 and, and 2016 we went 1-11. and 11. Now I was fired after all three of these years. I've had people ask me how do I avoid getting fired? I didn't. Whenever I got fired, I just created a new coach and then just put him back on Oklahoma, which is where we took over in 2017. This is also where we got quarterback Ty Downing. Immediately we go nine and four. The next year we go 11 and three and make the playoffs after winning the big 12. We then get bounced in the first round of the playoffs. And then 2019, we go 16 and 0. I don't think this thing can show 16 and 0, which is why it shows zero and zero, but we win the national championship in season six. And we now head to the coaching changes and the players leaving stage. And it looks like we got a new coach because I have 27 upgrade points available for my defensive coordinator. Okay, so we have a couple of coaching changes here, actually. Not just our defensive coordinator left, our offensive coordinator also left. Jeff Trailer left for a new job. So we bring in Matt Wells, who I believe is actually in real life currently working for Oklahoma. And then our defensive coordinator, Pat Knight, his contract expired. So we bring in Mel Tucker, who I believe in real life is the current head coach of Michigan State. So apparently we just traded coaches. Mel Tucker was fired from Michigan State, and that is the offer that Jeff Trailer took. And our former defensive coordinator, Pat Knight, has taken over for Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, who was fired. Whenever I was explaining earlier how I avoided getting fired in this game, and I said I really didn't avoid it, well, I would rename the coaches, and Pat Knight is actually a former head coach that I used as John Knight, but I renamed them, and then they just go off and do whatever. He came back as our defensive coordinator, won a national title, and now is going to go take over Ole Miss. And now we will take a look around the rest of the Big 12 to see what happened with head coaches. Obviously, Cincinnati's head coach got a contract extension since they just went to the Big 12 championship game. Dana Holgerson was fired from Houston and replaced by Jonathan Smith, who sounds like a fake dude, probably real. And then Beck was fired from UCF and he was replaced by Mike McDonald. And then I have no idea how to say that dude's last name over there, but he was fired and replaced by Neil Brown. Okay, so good news. Matt Wells was already level 27 and maybe already an offensive coordinator because I didn't have to burn any upgrade points on him. Since Mel Tucker was a head coach, I guess I now get to use all 27 points to just upgrade him real fast. So I went ahead and burned all of those real fast. So we have two maxed out coordinators. That should actually be really good. I don't know if they were maxed out before. I honestly don't remember. And then over here, we are currently level 25. We need two more levels to get everything done in the recruiting tree here. I have not even touched the game management tree just because I'm so concerned about getting recruits first. 
But now we get to jump into the players leaving stage. Now there are a couple players that could leave for the pro draft being Ty Downing, Wayne Outlaw, Jeff Benson. So I'm gonna hope we don't lose any of those guys. Okay, well it looks like the only one that actually made that decision was Ty Downing. The rest of them aren't even here. Downing's the only one that says he is staying right now, but Adam Macklin, one of our receivers, is trying to transfer. I honestly can't promise him too much. I'll say he'll play in more than nine games, and I feel it's an opportunity for me to start somewhere else. Okay, well, he is going to transfer to UTEP. And then obviously the big story here is we get to bring back Ty Downing for next season, so I don't have to start Sean Griffin just yet. And now there are a few seniors here that are leaving that I want to talk about. And I'll try to keep these short, but the first one I want to talk about is tight end Kevin Archie. He did not get to play a lot this year because we got Sam Lawson and he finishes with 853 yards and four touchdowns, but he was still a pretty big part of our team at one point. As you see, 31 catches and 34 catches in two of those years. He was a pretty solid player for us. I'll be completely honest. I thought Jeff Ryan played a lot more than this. Uh, he finishes his career with eight total tackles. I guess he did not see the field much. And then one of the very first corners I brought in is defensive back Tim Wilson. He didn't play much this year because he got buried on the depth chart. He didn't progress well whenever we did the training results. It just wasn't a great time for him. But he does finish his career with five interceptions and one defensive touchdown. And defensive tackle Ronnie Simpson saved his best season for his last season, getting eight sacks this year and finishing with a career of 14 sacks. I'll be completely honest here. Josh Golden did not do a whole lot here at Oklahoma. He was a transfer, I believe, from UTSA. He finished his career at Oklahoma with 10 carries for 48 yards. But the highlight of his career, I believe it was season three or four. We were playing Arkansas in week one, and we had just let up the touchdown that gave them the lead in the last like two minutes or something like that. And Golden returned the kick for a touchdown, winning us the game. And then we had defensive tackle Mike Handy, who had his best career here this year, getting 11 sacks. He finishes his career as a Sooner with 21 sacks. Clayton Samuel was a quarterback brought in in the same class as Tim Wilson, I believe. He finishes his career with two interceptions, and I believe he had the first pick six of the series. And then you have defensive end Thomas Jackson, who finishes his career with eight sacks. And now we have two players left to go over, and they are two of my favorite players from this entire series. The first one being running back BJ Smith. Now, I am sad that he did not get to play a whole lot this year. Like I said earlier, he got injured in week one, did not get healthy, I believe, until the conference championship game. And McKinney was literally a Heisman finalist by then. I could not bench him. But BJ Smith still finishes with a pretty solid career here at Oklahoma. 1,700 yards in 2018 and 23 touchdowns. He finished in the Heisman voting, but obviously Ty Downing won it in 2018. And then BJ Smith finishes his career with 2,800 yards and 38 rushing touchdowns. And for receiving, he caught 99 passes for 800 yards and another four touchdowns. And for awards in his career, he finishes with a 2018 Walker Award. And now for the player that I am probably most sad to lose this offseason, strong safety Kawika Moore. He was one of the best two-star recruits I was able to bring in. He finishes his career with the Sooners with 336 tackles, getting 110 this year, three total sacks, and five career interceptions. The one this year was in the national championship. And side note, if you remember back in the early part of this series, sometimes my defensive backs had to come in and play receiver whenever my receivers got really tired, and Kawika Moore finishes with five catches for 45 yards and a touchdown. And now for this screen, we have the draft results and the transfer request. I imagine both of these screens are about to be blank. No data for draft results. And what about transfer requests? We get no transfer requests for this season. And before we go in and show this real fast, I do want to say that this is probably going to be one of my lower recruiting classes, as crazy as that sounds, because I think I went a little too hard trying to get five stars and four stars, and I should have been scouting a little more. But right now we have nine people committed, and I'm trying to get several more here. And the first player I'm going to go over is John Jordan, the number one running back in the country coming out of Cortez, Colorado. He was originally an 80 overall after we scouted him. He dropped down to a 75, but he still is pretty solid. 92 speed, 85 acceleration, 83 elusiveness, 81 juke move. And honestly, I think I'm finally in a position where I can start to redshirt people. And the next player up is Hassan Nugent out of University Park, Texas. He is a four-star recruit and the number six defensive end in the country. Then we have outside linebacker Nate Thompson, who is a three-star recruit, but he has some pretty solid ratings. He's a 72 overall. And then defensive end Aaron, don't know how to pronounce your last name. Probably shouldn't have scouted this dude. I really have no idea how to even start to pronounce that. Then we have guard CJ Clark, who comes in as a three-star as well. William Brown, a four-star athlete. Adam Jackson, a four-star corner. Defensive end Lee Ross, who is a four-star. And then we have Elton Butler, a three-star corner. 
and I highly doubt I'm going to get to fill all 25 scholarship spots for this season, but here are the players that I'm trying to get in this stage. The first one being the number two tight end in the country out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Fun fact, that is my hometown. Thomas Patterson is six foot eight, 260 pounds, and here are the ratings he will come in with. Not as fast as I would like, but at six foot eight, he's gonna be huge. And then I don't know if I will actually be able to land the number one quarterback in the country here, but Jason Rosario out of Rowlett, Texas is the number one quarterback. He is a pocket passer, so I may have to change my offense a bit if I land him. But once again, another player that could possibly redshirt just like the number one running back. And then there's just a few players here left to go over, like defensive tackle Chris Rowland, tackle Andrew Harrell, strong safety Sean Bryant, defensive tackle David Jones, down here is athlete Matt Mayhem, who is a Juco transfer. I used to not really target them, but usually Washington was pretty good for us. And then Raymond Miller, a 66 overall athlete. Ed Franklin, a 67 overall defensive end. And then Danelle May, a 75 overall Juco transfer corner. I will say one problem I had with this recruiting class is I think I'm pretty rusty at recruiting with no restrictions. So the first few seasons, I could only recruit two, three star, and then I could finally recruit four star. Now there are no restrictions and I feel like I jumped the gun too much trying to get too many four and five star players like I said earlier. And the results are in here. We do not get the number one quarterback in the country. Jason Rosario goes to New Mexico. Granted, like I said, he was a pocket passer so I may have had to change my offense a little bit. I run a lot of option plays and right now our backup quarterback, Sean Griffin has like 90 speed. So I think he may be the better option. I was just trying to see if I could actually get the number one quarterback. We do land the six foot eight tight end, Thomas Patterson. He will probably immediately start for us. We also get the Juco transfer corner and Danelle May. We also landed a right tackle to Andrew Harrell and we get Chris Rowland. And then we also got guard Bobby Jackson and defensive tackle Mike Watkins. Y'all are pretty low rated. Don't know if you'll even make the team, but we will see. All right, so not great, but not horrible. We finished as the 16th ranked recruiting class. We ended up with two five stars four four stars and 10 three stars we got a few two stars as well who got the most five stars in the country that would be usc and new mexico new mexico ended up with five or i'm sorry with three five stars one of them being the number one quarterback i don't know how the hell y'all pulled that off notre dame is the number one class in the country with 13 four stars that is pretty impressive georgia is the number two miami's the number three oregon's the number four and tennessee is the number five who is the highest rated one in the Big 12? That is going to be TCU with a 12th ranked recruiting class. Texas is down here at 14. And I only managed to land one athlete this year, a four star in William Brown. Let's see, he's a 77 overall running back, a 76 overall wide receiver, a 70 overall tight end, and really kind of garbage everywhere else. Let's see, he has 88 speed. Where is his catching? That is a 73, 72 catch in traffic. Uh, he doesn't have quite the speed I wanted a running back, so let's go ahead and move him over to wide receiver. I don't know how stacked we are in that position, but that's where we're moving him. He is 6'6", 230, so that is a big receiver for us. And now, like I say every offseason, it is time for my favorite part of the offseason. Let's see how much better or worse everyone got. And the first thing I notice is Ty Downing is now a 91 overall. Sean Griffin is now an 80 overall. Downing got plus 10 to awareness, though, so that could kind of inflate this plus 4. He obviously got plus one to speed, plus one to acceleration. Sean Griffin got a little faster as well. But let's take a look at throw power and throw accuracy. Ty Downing does not get any better, 85 and 85. But Sean Griffin, plus one to throw power, plus three to accuracy. And then Josh McCray, the third string, plus two to throw power and plus six to throw accuracy. And now for running backs, Chris McKinney, an 84 overall. Kellen Simmons is a 78. He got plus seven, making him pass Lance Mullins. No one got any faster. We got a bit more acceleration for McKinney, though. He is now a 92 there. Uh, Kellen Simmons also got plus 11 to awareness, plus 7 to break tackle for McKinney. Anything else go up? Stiff arm plus 2, spin move plus 4, juke move plus 1, carrying plus 2. I didn't know Kellen Simmons had 96 carrying. That's actually pretty high, obviously. And I don't see anything else here. So, yeah, that's how much better our running backs got. Okay, this is going to be a little bit confusing, honestly. Wayne Outlaw gets plus 7 to his overall. He is now an 89. Joey Miller is now an 85 with plus 3 to his overall. Jeff Benson got plus 2 to speed and plus 3 to his overall. Youth Lane Washington, after an 1,800-yard season and 18 touchdowns, loses 2 overall points, loses a speed rating. That is obviously not good. He may not be a, much of a part of the offense as he was last year. And tight end Sam Lawson apparently doesn't get any better at all. Did any of your ratings change or did they just all stay the same? 
Well, it looked like everything stayed the same. So yeah, you were probably going to be the backup this year. I generally try to do the offensive line all in one. So let's go ahead and start that. Marlon Ellis is now a 79 overall left guard. Josh Higgins loses three overall points. Great. At center, Steve Thomas got plus two. Right guard gets plus four to Jacob Thomas. And right tackle, we don't have any on the roster. I screwed that up again. What we do, it's a true freshman. And Dwight Rollins, after his incredible season, gets plus five to his overall, plus three to acceleration, plus 11 to awareness. Anything else jump up higher is that just the awareness, which kind of helps because I don't really control him. He gets plus four to tackle, plus one to hit power, plus eight to power move, two to finesse move, one to block shedding, and plus four to play rec. And then Spencer also got plus seven to play rec. We obviously have not seen much of him. I believe he is a transfer. And Ashton Mills gets plus two to his overall. Marcus Ross also gets plus two. What about defensive tackle? Ryan Covington gets plus four to his. He makes it to a 77 overall. And Scott Thomas gets plus five, making him a 74. At left outside linebacker, Justin Rogers is now a 78 overall. At middle linebacker, David Jordan gets plus four to go to a 78 overall. He gets plus two to strength, plus three to acceleration. What else here? Didn't get anything to awareness. Plus three to catching. Don't really care about that. Uh, these are more what I care about. Plus three to hit power, five to power move. What about play rec? Plus 11 to play rec. That is awesome for a sophomore. And then at right outside linebacker, we now have senior Jake Wright, who is an 80 overall. Uh, let's see, he gets plus three to awareness. What about play rec to him? I don't know how much these outside linebackers actually touch the field. He gets plus six to hit power, four to power move, six to finesse move. Where is his play rec? He gets plus eight to play rec. So I am not 100% sure how player upgrades work, and I don't think they have anything related to stats. Alex Red gets plus three. Eugene Blake gets plus nine to his overall. George Steele, who led the team in picks last year, was tied for second in the country with eight, only gets plus one. Eugene Blake goes to 95 speed. Let's see, he got plus 11 to awareness, which is obviously huge because I don't control the DBs. Uh, catching everyone got a little bit better. That's fine. What about everything else? Pursuit plus 11 to Blake, play rec plus seven to Blake. Alex Rednow is 91 play rec. Man coverage, Alex Rednow is 95. Blake has 83, Steel is 86. Zone coverage, Alex Red stays at 87, but Eugene Blake goes up to 187 and also gets plus six to his play, or I'm sorry, to his uh, press rating. And Brian Alexander, the true freshman that got to play all of last season goes up to an 89 overall. That is incredible. He gets plus six to his overall here, plus seven to awareness. Where did he get better besides that? Plus four to catching, that's pretty good. Plus four to jumping. Uh, he can apparently play quarterback, didn't know that. Plus five to tackle, plus three to hit power. Uh, where else? Play rec is now an 86, gets plus six to man coverage, plus eight to zone coverage. Now in the 90s for both of those, 82 to his press rating. And did I scroll past play rec? I don't even remember talking about play rec, but I could have and just not mentioned it. 86 and 82. I probably already talked about it though. And over at strong safety, Jason Tremblay gets plus three along with Clint Reynolds. And I'll be completely honest, Eric Kemp may go over and play strong safety because I think he has the ratings too. And he is a better safety than these two guys right now. Jermaine Allen gets plus two to his overall, plus seven to awareness. What about his actual kicking sets? Did they get any better? Plus three to kick power and plus one to kick accuracy. And then our punter, Jim Kelly, gets plus six. Even though I didn't really use him as a punter last year, I just used Jermaine Allen. And this guy's probably going to get cut. So there is all of the player upgrades. So now overall wise, the best player on our team is Ty Downing. Brian Alexander gets plus six to his rating. But I think the biggest upgrade is Eugene Blake with plus nine. The only player that got cut was the punter I just showed, Howard Olsen, because we were not even at the maximum roster size. As of right now, we are going to remain in the Big 12. Maybe in the next couple years or so, I will move us over to the SEC along with Texas. But for right now, we're just going to stay with the way it is. So in previous off seasons, what I've done is I've done the schedule in the off season video. Well, last year I did the like season 16 preview and I'm going to do that again for season seven but I'm going to add the schedule to it this time. So that is going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys next time.